15 miles from Kirkwall, the capital town of Orkney, on a promontory overlooking an hollow sound, lie the intriguing ruins of the Broch of Garnes. The word Broch derives from the Scots word Broch, meaning fort. The Norse Vikings used a similar word, Borg, to describe these structures. Okay. Unfortunately, as you will see from the raindrops on the camera lens, we were greeted by some damp weather on the morning of our visit. This settlement is interesting as it includes an Iron Age village which surrounds the Broch. The village was originally built at the same time or very soon after the Broch was constructed. Brochs are a class of roundhouse found throughout northwest Scotland, thought now to have been built by the local indigenous population in the 1st century BC and 1st century AD. One of the most complete remaining examples is the Musa Broch on Shetland. It is unclear what the brochs were used for. Were they defensive? A place of refuge for a community under threat, perhaps? Or were they the status symbols for important local families? No one knows for sure, but they must have been impressive structures in their heyday when compared to other buildings of that time. The Broch builders didn't seem to choose the best land to build on. Rocky outcrops and shorelines seem to have been favoured. Circular ditches and ramparts often surrounded the broch. This would appear to suggest some defensive use. It's interesting that brochs tend to be clustered together, often within sight of each other. For instance, Midhow Broch stands on the opposite shore of Einhallow Sound within sight of Gurness Broch. For centuries, the Gurness Broch site remained hidden, buried in a grassy mound known locally as the Nau O Acherness. It was discovered in 1929 by the Arcadian poet Robert Rendell. It said he was sitting sketching on the mound when the leg of his stool slipped into a hole in the grass. A little excavation revealed the top of a stairway leading down into the mound. A year later, further excavations revealed the ruins of the broch. Archaeologists believe settlement at Gurness began sometime between 500 and 200 BC. The stone Broch Tower probably was originally 10 metres high, but the remaining walls today only reach 3.6 metres. Broch walls are actually a double wall, with a staircase inside winding up the Broch to give access to upper floors. This can be best seen at the Musa Broch in Shetland, where you can still walk to the top inside the two walls. It is thought the broch would have had a thatched roof and probably a wooden floor, although access to timber in Orkney would have been difficult. Perhaps there were more trees in Orkney 2,000 years ago. From ground level, it's difficult to make out the layout of the broch village, which archaeologists believe would have been built about the same time as the Broch. But of course, many changes have been made to it over the centuries. It's interesting that these Broch villages are fairly common in Orkney, but are not featured beside Brochs in the rest of northwest Scotland's mainland. From above, you can make out the pattern of densely packed, semi-detached houses. It is thought that as many as 30 or 40 families occupied these little dwellings. 
The Broch partially collapsed during its occupation and was repaired and modified before eventually being abandoned sometime after 100 AD. Some of the stones were then robbed to build other dwellings on top of existing structures. The causeway path to the entrance of the Broch makes an impressive approach to the Broch. In common with other Brochs on either side of the entrance, two cells have been built. They're too small to be guard houses, but they might have been used as kennels for guard dogs. The original interior of the Broch included a rectangular hearth, built-in stone cupboards and steps leading down to a subterranean cellar with a water tank fed by a spring. This water tank feature has been found at other brochs, notably at the adjacent Meinhau broch. It has been speculated that it may have had some ritual use. There is evidence of rebuilding and reshaping of the interior after a partial collapse of the broch. The water tank cellar was filled in. The broch was eventually abandoned and the surrounding ditches filled in sometime after AD 100. Sometime after it was abandoned, a Pictish house was built on what would have been a grassy mound. Archaeologists excavated the house and removed it to reach the earlier structures beneath. The house was reconstructed close to the visitor centre. The site became a single farmstead until around the 8th century. Vikings arrived in Orkney in the late 8th century and took over from the indigenous Pictish people. It's not clear whether the Picts were slaughtered by the Vikings or integrated with them. Archaeologists discovered a grave of a Viking woman dug into the old ramparts of the Broch settlement. And there is evidence there may have been other Viking burials at this site. Gurness appears to have been left in peace for the next 1100 years until, in 1929, Robert Rendell's stool disturbed its tranquillity.